I wrote this article about uh, how um, games don't really use humor that much, and they certainly don't use subversive humor that much. And a while ago, I started making this uh, uh, game about my army experience, and again, I'll talk about it a lot more. And um, um, and so, um, sort of combined the two notions, because the game has a lot of uh, uh, the sort of weird humor stuff that is interesting. So my name is Ifat, uh, and I'm here to tell you how I use subversive humor to make a game about the, mundan the mundanity of serving in the army. I also am going to say certain stuff not correctly, I'm sorry in advance. Blame it on the accent. Um, uh, and, and so a little bit about myself. This is where I grew up. Uh, I grew up in Jerusalem, kind of a weird place. Uh, you might have heard about it, you've seen the news sometimes. Uh, and at the age of 18, I served two years in the army. Uh, I'm sorry, all my pictures are at my parents' house, and my parents are in Japan right now, so I couldn't get, so I did this amazing Photoshop job. Uh, and um, so uh, Israel has mandatory army service, and um, like aside from the political uh, issue of it all and and obviously I've been through like I'm in my 30s now so my opinions of stuff have changed a lot since I was 18 uh, but I did have to do my mandatory army service and my mandatory army service was I served in a computer unit in the army so my uh, army service wasn't exactly the most exciting thing you ever had uh, and now I live in Canada uh, in Toronto, as we all talked, uh, I came here, the first song I've heard coming to New York was Drake, uh, and a lot of, and I started giggling, because I think, uh, I think you get arrested in Canada if you say something against Drake, uh, it's just a thing, uh, it's part of the citizenship test right now, but, uh, but like, um, I came to Canada, and like, in Israel I'm not anything special, like, I grew up in Jerusalem, Jerusalem has million people. Um, I served in the army. Everyone who's Jewish has to serve in the army in Israel. And that's like, you have ways to get out. But, you know, when I was 18, I wasn't exactly uh, particularly politically savvy about it. Um, and so when I started talking to people in Canada, they're like, oh my god, you've served in the army. Do you know Krav Maga? <laughs> I do not know Krav Maga. Uh, the, have you fired a weapon? Yes, once. Um, and like, oh, you grew up in Jerusalem, so like, did you like go to like the Wailing Wall every day, or did you go to like mosque? No, I, you know, I lived in like, I lived in West, my parents lived in West South Jerusalem. It's like super not secular area of Jerusalem, and you don't go to areas like certain areas in Jerusalem uh, without. So my. I figured out that my life experience has been so different than people in Canada specifically, but in North America in general. So, um, so just I'll get to it again. Um, but I want to talk a little bit about uh, what, so about humor and about specifically about subversive humor. So, subversive um, the, is basically uh, talks about simply trying to ruin or destroy a government political system. Uh, or do a, uh, a subversive activity. Uh, and when you talk about humor, it's about criticizing something in, in a clever and indirect way in order to make it weaker or less effective. Um, and so a lot of stuff like satire is very common, uh, surreal humor, uh, Monty Python has a lot of very subversive stuff, uh, Mel Brooks, um, and uh, so in the same way of terms, subversive humor is humor which criticizes powerful dogma, concept, or institution. Subversive humor often functions as a tool to express frustration, dissident, and to ultimately challenge exist existing power relations and convi convictions. So um, the whole point of subversive humor, and it comes in all forms. So uh, again, satire, you have what's called ethnic humor, which I hate the term, but it uh, mostly refers to uh, it used to be a lot of Jewish humor, black, uh, like African American, uh, feminist humor, sort of humor that goes and challenges um, a lot of the sort of dogmas around the, uh, the, the 
particular uh, environment we live in. So, for example, Dave Chappelle, uh, Mel Bro Brooks is a very good example of, of, of ethnic humor. Um, and, uh, and of course, satire, we all know satire, so uh, John Stewart and uh, alike. And, um, we, and dark, like a lot of British humor, dark humor, very uh, surreal humor, so uh, Monty Python does a, a very subversive humor. Uh, I'm talking of pop culture, uh, Blackheader, which I will mention again, uh, Charlie Chaplin stuff are very subversive. So it's a very particular type of humor. Uh, so why subversive humor? Um, so first thing you, oh man, I have this weirdness going on. <laughs> so, uh, okay, so subversive humor, uh, why is it important? It, um, it kind of deletes the clutter and the noise around issues that make people feel uncomfortable. It's very approachable. Um, like if you criticize way, something in a funny way, people who don't necessarily feel connected to it might feel a little bit more comfortable. It's a way to ridicule the oppressed by creating, um, okay, I have this weird stuff. Uh, it's a way to, uh, to ridicule the oppressor and give it a, a, um, a way to melt the fear of the people ridiculing uh, the person and also um, uh, help like avoid like like when you ridicule something in a subversive way you sort of making a person this person um, sort of not being able to answer you without being part of the ridicule so if you are familiar with stuff like clown army and stuff like that there's political actions that use humor to um, to create something to uh, ridicule uh, usually uh, dictators and stuff like that. So uh, last thing in the humor stuff, uh, so um, there's what's called theory and humor, I won't get into it. Again, there's the paper, you can read it if you really want to. But um, uh, my favorite, one of the thing I'm gonna talk about, so I'm gonna mention, it's uh, the incongruity uh, theory, uh, which means, um, it's, it's a theory that says that humor comes from taking stu two stuff that are not connected and putting them together. Um, so um, <laughs> I read a paper about it when I wrote the paper and it says like pun is the lowest form of humor and I made fun of Henry because of that. So, but that's just a, so for example, in games, uh, if you take something like uh, Octodad, it's incredible because you have this like weird octopus character but he's in a perfectly normal situation and the humor comes from having this weird thing in a perfectly normal situation. Um, Goat Simulator does the same thing but um, I don't know. So why are games not funny? Uh, it's hard to pinpoint the exact reason why, so many why there is so many difficult creating funny games. Uh, there are three reasons why I pinpointed. Um, so one of them is, I don't know what's happening with my no, uh, um, the fact that games are repetitive uh, makes it really hard to continue uh, making funny, uh, uh, continuing having a thing be funny. The other thing is that um, we tend to like have all the, um, uh, it's really hard to predict how the player will play the game and how we make it funny. And, and also video games tend to be very heroic and like, let's say whatever, and it doesn't really work well with humor, at least that's what people think. So uh, last thing, uh, the way in which games incorporate humor and subversive, uh, humor or subversive using text and visuals. So um, I, I use the example of adventure games. They use a lot of like uh, puns and uh, text puns or visual puns. So they keep the humor on the top level and it doesn't go to the mechanics. There is the using the game interaction, the mechanics. So I give examples Goat Simulator. If you take out the goat in Goat Simulator, the game is still funny. Because the funny, the humor in Goat Simulator, Octodad, something like that, comes from the weird physics and the fact that it subverts the idea of, of uh, failure. And again, read the paper, it's all there. Uh, and the all rounder, which has everything that doesn't exist, I suspect it does exist, which is Undertale, but I haven't played enough Undertale to tell you. So, uh, real life absurdity. So, um, as I said, I came to Canada, going back, I came to Canada and I was like, okay, no one here had my life experience. Um, and so I, and not only that, like, 
games. It just came out and I had to put it because it's hilarious. So Call of Duty, our like knowledge in, in, in North America, 90% of the time comes from games. And games don't present a realistic view of the army. Movies don't present a realistic view of the army. Some movies do and I will show you, but um, this is not real. <laughs> not only that, it's kind of offensive. The infinite, uh, and, and I think people, a lot of people make fun of it, but none of it is real. Uh, my experience in the army, and even people who are fighters, I know people who fought in the army, this is not real experience. So this is the real experience. The army is a large and slow corporate machine. I went home every day, I fixed computers, I was in a computer help desk, it was boring, it was mundane, there was this tiny, tiny constant rules that you have to follow all the time. This is a better representation of what an army is than something like Call of Duty. And even like people who are, again, I, I have friends who fought in wars and stuff like that, they will, you know, they will tell you about like sitting in ambush for 30 hours. Um, and singing song because there's nothing to do. Uh, they'll tell you about the weird like guard duty stuff. They won't tell you so much. There is a price to pay for killing someone. There is a price to pay for being in a war situation. And they will tell you about the small little stuff, so the mundane stuff where like an officer decides uh, that today everyone's shoes has to be clean. And you can't do anything about it. And the reason why it exists is because it's a way to keep everyone in line. Uh, and, and if you listen to Serial, the uh, season two of Serial, they talk about, one of the things they do talk about is like how this guy didn't fit. They couldn't handle the rules. And I've seen guys like that, or, or women like that. You cannot deal with this stupid like little stuff. So I, I made a game about, I started making a game about the army and it sort of morphed into something really, really funny because the mundane is funny. Um, Comedy likes to highlight the absurd and reality. So this is from Blackadder, season four of Blackadder. And there's, uh, which is one of my favorite um, uh, shows because it really presents like how it really is. And there's like this part where he puts like the, he, he tries to get out of the army and he puts these things in his, uh, in his like, he, he tries to make it seem like he's crazy. So there's, I know people who've done that. This is far more realistic than a lot of other stuff we see. Um, uh, so I, I use subversive armor to highlight the mundane. This is from an Israeli movie. Uh, I can't remember the name right now. It's really recommended because it does the same. It's my army service. This is like, th this girl's job is to shred paper. This is our army job. And there are people who do that. Um, so I made um, this game and every other choice in the game was made to subvert the idea of the army. And again, I'm going back to incongruity. I chose to make the game pink. <laughs> uh, when I show it around, I have like a pink tablecloth, like bright pink tablecloth. Uh, I made it all like soft and, and, and like clean and boring and nothing like completely different from, again, um, any other military game because I wanted to make Part of the humor is to avoid everything. My trailer, I made a new trailer, makes fun of our concept of the army. So everything goes back to the incongruity of it all. Uh, I have one minute, right? Okay, so just to add, um, this is me, Fatsha Uh This is my Twitter if you want to follow. Uh, my company, uh, together with my uh, business partner, the, uh, the really serious game company. Uh, <laughs> This is the website. Uh, you can read, there's three episodes right now. We just had episode three. So you can um, play the game. Uh, I will also be on Saturday showing it, so if anyone wants. And there's the original in my website. It's called Subversive Humor in Games. You can also read it in Gamma Sutra.